Hey guys, it's Steph Barker, and I'm back to show you some more tricks with rudiments. Um, this time, I'm going to start with, really, we're kind of just backtracking a little bit, because this is like the main foundation for, you know, chops and all rudiments, is the double stroke roll. Um, there's really two main types of rolls, and a lot of people are familiar with a buzz roll, or it's also known as a crush roll. And with that roll, you kind of use the natural bounce that the stick already has, and you're pushing it into the drum or practice pad. A double stroke roll is where you're clearly making two hits on each hand, and you gradually get faster. So before you get to building up your speed, it's always good to start slow, like with every rudiment you want to start slow. With the double stroke roll particularly, you kind of, in order to transition to get faster, you shift the power from your wrists to your fingers. Now, to start out, the sticking is just right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, and this stays the same the entire time. Um, no matter if you are a traditional player or if you hold matchstick. Um, I'll show you matchstick first. So when you want to start out, you're just going to be doing all wrist. And notice how high I'm lifting the sticks up. Really slow, really powerful, deliberate hits, all coming from the wrist. So once you start um, getting comfortable with getting the power as fast as you can go with just using your wrists, that's when you start to shift to using your fingers. Now, if you hold your stick, you should be able to drop it and then pull it back with your fingers. And that creates two hits. This is the motion that you're going to use when you get faster um, into your double stroke roll. So again, matchstick, starting out slow, all wrists, and once you start to get faster, you switch over to your fingers. And you just go as fast as you can go. Traditional grip is the same, your right hand stays the same, and you still want to use all wrist. It's like turning a doorknob. Basically, have your hand out like you're turning a doorknob. That's what you want to see. Now, traditional, you can't do the same drop and grab like we were doing for match. It's more of like, it's like you release it and then you grab it again. It's, so you're still dropping it and grabbing it, but it's like a let go. See how my fingers are almost letting go? And then you're grabbing it again. Okay. So now, the best way to practice these once you, you feel comfortable on a practice pad, to really build up your muscles and build up your chops so you know you're getting, you can get a lot of speed, is to practice it on something that has absolutely no rebound at all. So what I like to use and what I recommend is a pillow, which we magically have. So this might be really, really quiet because it's a pillow, but... You're, you'll get the idea that you can you should still be able to play a double stroke role making those hits individually on something that has absolutely no rebound. And same thing with match. Hopefully you can hear it a little bit. Um, and you can imagine if you can build up your chops to have that much speed on something that doesn't have rebound, when you go and take it back to the pad or to the drums, which is even more bouncy than a practice pad, you're going to be on fire. You'll be able to move anywhere you want. Um, so now what we're going to do is take some of that and move it over to the drums. All right, so now we're at the kit, and the first thing you want to do is just play it on a drum and see how it feels on an actual drum. And 
like the same thing we did on the pad is just drop it and just see how the stick naturally bounces back to get the feel of whatever kind of head that you're working with. Another name for the right, right, left, left, those double hits on each hand is called a diddle. And you'll hear that a lot in, you know, you're playing eighth notes, someone will say, oh, t diddle them. So then you're playing it like double time, both hands. Um, so you can move those diddles around the kit when you're playing a double stroke roll. Of course, like in the middle of a song, you don't want to bust out and be like just playing diddles everywhere. But for a little touches or if you have a solo for somewhere, it's great to just to be able to have that in your back pocket. Um, another thing that you can do that makes sense in a groove situation is just a little accent. So all I'm going to do right now is just play a groove and then play a double stroke roll. This is called the five stroke because I'm just doing one, two, three, four, five hits. That's another rudiment is a five stroke roll. So I'm just going to do that while playing a groove between the hi-hat and the snare drum. So it'll sound like this. It's one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five would be the entire five stroke roll. Um, but as you can see, it just adds a little bit of spice to whatever kind of groove that you're playing. If you okay, so the last thing I want to mention um, with just mixing up diddles and double stroke roll is diddling between your hand and your bass drum. So for example, you can just do left, left, foot, foot, left, left, foot, foot, left, left, foot, foot. It's like a double stroke roll between your left hand and your foot. Same thing, you can do that with your right hand. And those are just little things to add, you know, Again, in solo situations, between a groove, just fun stuff that you can add in. Um, not all the time, but, you know, if you had a solo. Um, another thing you can do is diddle right, right, left, left, foot, foot, and move that around. Still using diddles, double stroke rolling, but you're incorporating your foot, so... incorporate some of the diddles um, and maybe throw in some fills. It's kind of like just a drumming staple, um, but again, it's one of those things that you want to use, throwing it in a groove sparingly, and if you get that chance to have a solo, then you can go wild and really show you know what chops you have, but it's just a fun thing to do um, if you're just playing by yourself, like in this situation, um, and good luck. Oh, um, use a pillow. But seriously, you should really, really use a pillow when you're practicing. It's going to help your chops so much, and you'll have that strength already there. So use a pillow. Thank you.